jump over to our man Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report, right under the newsletters tab at the front page of TFNN.com. All our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. I'm not sure there's been a time that I've at least been as interested in currencies and how they're shaping this market, and we're seeing it play out today and this week right away. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So where do we start on today, man? We got some movement across the board. Uh, currencies, yen, dollar, crude with an 83 handle. What are you checking out this morning, Teddy? Where do you want to go? Uh, well, I would say, first of all, right now that you got to view what's happening currently as we're speaking, I think, as a profit taking bounce. Uh, you got to realize the markets have been open for already almost two days, even though everyone else came to work, uh, you know, or three days actually. And now everyone came to work yesterday, you know. So we had a lot of follow through yesterday. I mean, if you look at where the bonds were at a high yesterday versus where they're at now, I mean, a half a point, half a basis dollar bounce isn't a big thing. It's right now, I think they're squeezing out the, uh, the weak shorts and the weak longs in the uh, U.S. dollar right now. Yeah, it is pretty interesting, some of the relationships that are going on uh, at these like exacerbated lows and highs. Mm -hmm. uh, how about how about the yen and, and what's <laughs> going on there? I, I, I'm not sure if you just heard the segment, man, that I took Japanese. I was over there. Yen's uh, The yen was had some volatility back then in the late 90s. And I mm -hmm. can't believe that we're basically at the price level that uh, I graduated high school in, which is crazy yeah. enough, 1998 on the yen. What do you think of this move? Are we reaching a potential peak here or 145 is pretty crazy? Oh, I think it's going parabolic, my friend. I mean, like right <laughs> now, this is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, anyone who read the report, you know, on Monday or whatever knows that we've already hit our targets. <laughs> so sure. We were looking for 142 and 142 to 143 area and at least see a little bit of a breaking of, you know, on the on the rally. But this is. You know, what we've been talking about, I've, I've been mentioning the velocity of money and it's starting to really ripple into the uh, foreign markets, you know, and you got to realize Japan doesn't just deal with us, you know, so as these other countries' currencies are collapsing versus the dollar, it doesn't help them either, you know, so, and I think it's being very reflective. Um, I, you know, a lot of people say that they should become hawkish to protect the yen. Well, there's a reason why they're not becoming hawkish because being hawkish causes inflation. So they can't go, like it can't go down anymore. So they're sure. not going to go up. You know, I know people don't believe that view or they, they follow the Fed, but I mean, look at the repercussions of what's going on with what the Fed's been doing now for a year, you know? So, I mean, there's a reality you have to, I mean, facts are facts, you know, it's not, oh, it's a big inflation. one. Yeah. You know, and it's pretty so. it is pretty crazy that we're almost approaching that year, man. Right. And in terms of mm -hmm. the final quarter of last year, the markets kind of defied the expectation. And then January 1st. But we're already into uh, beginning of September. And it seems like it's been turmoil and, and negative market action mm -hmm. and, and Fed anticipation. Uh, and we're almost approaching like a year from that type of, of mentality. Right, right. Well, remember a year ago was when it's when I was already preaching, get long the U.S. dollar yen is going to be a big trend. I mean, I. <laughs> And what's going on over the past couple of days just really is, is, I think, solidifying my view that, yeah, the, the velocity of money is, is, is actually collapsing, you know, and it's because of what's going on. Look at how the bonds have traded just since Sunday night. You know, I mean, like we had a lot of market action going from Sunday night into Tuesday morning, let alone yesterday's trade, you know. So, yes. I mean, and this is without the numbers. This is just a free trading market. This is without the Fed meeting. It has not occurred yet. We know what the bias is. You know, we know we have CPI coming out. I bet you CPI will be very similar to last uh, last month. It's probably going to be still higher, but it's not going to be at the increasing rate that it has been at. But that doesn't mean that it's not inflation is, is being curbed. It's just that velocity of inflation is, is being diminished a little bit, you know, so but the trend remains intact. So I would, I would use a lot of caution right now fading the dollar. I think you want to be in a buy dip scenario. And right now today, I, I wouldn't doubt it if today we see another snap back. And you could see the, the, the yen making new highs, the Swiss franc making or U.S. dollar Swiss making new highs. The euro, they're waiting on to see if the ECB is going to start to become hawkish. I don't think they can afford to be. To be quite honest with you, I think they're going to try and put as much pressure on our Fed to put the brakes on because these central banks know that if they start doing that, it's just going to hurt them even more globally because all it's going to help them is against the U.S. dollar. So, OK, if their import or their exports, meaning our imports, that helps them by coming hawkish. But then they screw all the other co countries that are being you know, decimated by their currencies valuations. Yes. You know, so the, the Fed is creating this whole turmoil. 
You know, the reality is 80% of all transactions are done in U.S. dollar globally. What, what, what is the one, what is the, who has to make the move? Yeah. We have to make the move, you know, yeah. and that's not happening. You know, at least I, I would be stunned. I mean, do you think the Chairman Powell listens to what I'm saying right now? <laughs> if, he does, <laughs> if he does hear it or gets somebody whispering it, he's like, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. That's nonsense. But I'm not an economist. So what do I know? I just all I know is I make money off of the trends with my points of view. <laughs> yeah, listen, and we got some trends, man, for sure. Uh, how about the trend in crude? We got an 83 oh, yeah. handle today. And so normally, right, before mm -hmm. 83, geez, 82.93 I got down to. We're trading at 83.67 right now. Now, usually, Teddy, right, uh, the U.S. is an oil producer. So if mm -hmm. we had lower oil prices, normally that would be hurting the dollar, right, versus maybe mm -hmm. even versus the yen in particular. Mm -hmm. But is that mm -hmm. just not a big enough factor right now with crude? Is that or is that a relationship that plays out? Am I correct on that relationship usually? You are. You are 100 percent correct on it. Now, here's what I think why what's happening in crude. Um, I live in a very dense area, the Chicagoland area. We just had Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend is typically, you know, the, the parking lots aren't as filled up at restaurants. You don't need to worry about reservations because a lot of people are out of town, you know, they're traveling. Um, but the reality is Labor Day weekend wasn't really any different than any other normal weekend around lately, you know? So, and what I have noticed is that traffic is very thin. People aren't driving around. Like if I go shopping now, like I can go now at like six o'clock to Walmart in the evening and I don't have to worry about a mess of people being there. The parking okay. lots are they're not empty, but they are not full by the way they usually are. You know what I mean? So people are not running around. They're doing all their shopping in one loop. They're not going out, coming back in. You know what I mean? I think that the reason oil is, is right now riding the lows is because the demand in the U.S. is shrinking because of the usage, not because people don't want to drive, but because they're they're just they're doing that kind of a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, how many parents do you think are saying, "Okay, kid, you you know, they're, they're teenagers, just drive around and and go run around and see their friends all afternoon." You know, they're gonna be like, "Hey, either you get a job and pay for that gas, or you can forget about it." You know. Sure. So I mean, and I think that's the reality is that <clears throat> that, that right now the demand, I mean, is just not being it's not being the way it normally would be because of the pricing. You know, people are scared. They, they still have to, when they go shopping, they're like, okay, here's the choice. Do I drive around and just waste time and money or do I pay for these groceries that are now 50% more, you know? Oh, the grocery so. deal, man. Let me tell you, I've been talking to friends. I don't really use Insta. I used to, I was using Instacart often and especially during the pandemic and, um, you know, a baby on the way and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. when you add percentages on percentages on percentages, man, it's just mm -hmm. rationalizing it uh, very difficult at this time, especially with the rising number and that the uh, food prices. It's a big one. Right. Well, Teddy, we appreciate it as always, man. Always an adventure. We got crew at 8330. We got some action. Uh, can't wait to see where we are US one week from. dollar bull is not going away, baby. <laughs> dollar bull. Got to love it, man. King dollar. Teddy, we appreciate it, man. Have a great week. We'll Thanks, talk to you next Tom. Wednesday. All right. Take Folks, care. Folks, check out the Tiger Forex report under the newsletter tab. We'll be right back after the break.